What's going on, y'all? Seven foot one, five star prospect McCor McCor has committed to Howard University. That's right, a five star prospect in basketball committed to an HBCU over a PWI, and that this is absolutely groundbreaking. And I think it's going to set a trend for other young players coming out playing basketball collegially to also go to HBCUs as well, man. McCor is the 18th ranked player in the 2020 draft class, and uh, he chose Howard over UCLA. Which is all you need to know, man. Um, this move is like, this is really, really groundbreaking news, man. To have a five-star recruit choose a historically black college and university, that is absolutely wonderful. And like this move, again, will influence other top, other top prospects to do the same. To actually commit to HBCUs and not just talk about it. And hopefully... Uh, Mikey Williams, another top player in the, uh, I don't know if it's a, what, I don't know what recruiting class he's in, but hopefully he will come out and commit to an HBCU as well because he talked about doing the same thing. And I believe his mother, I, I heard this, his mother went to, uh, Hampton University. So maybe it would influence him to also go to an HBCU. But like, think about this, man. The setting is perfect, right? The timing is right. But at the same time, it's several black coaches who are former NBA players and former champions like Lindsey Hunter and, um, and, and, and what's my boy name? Mo Williams that are also at uh, HBCUs. Lindsey Hunter is at my alma mater, Mississippi Valley State University, and Mo Williams is at uh, Alabama State uh, University. Which And with those guys, former players coaching HBCUs, I think that will help with the recruitment of young black talent, young top black talent coming out of high school, right? This move for black players to go to HBCUs will bring so much revenue to the HBCUs. Like, and I, I and I, I commend the young generation of black kids. This young generation of black kids are fearless, and they recognize the power that they have, and they're going to use that power to their advantage and say, you know what, I can make a change, and I'm going to bring more exposure and more uh, better finances to these schools that were created for black kids. They were, I mean, black yeah, black students. HBCUs were, were uh, created for the black students who wanted to go to college, but they couldn't get accepted into the predominantly white institutions due to segregation, right? And they have been around for many, many years. Our, grand, our grandfathers, grandmothers, uh, great-grandmothers, and fathers and mothers have went to these institutions, and a lot of them are struggling to stay open. They're on their last leg financially. They're not doing, they're not doing very well. And what better way to pour more money into these HBCUs than, than to have the top athletic talent go to these schools and compete and complete, excuse me, compete collegially uh, at these schools, man. If they go to these HBCUs, it will bring the TV crews to the universities and put these universities on primetime television for the world to watch, which will bring in more money and exposure to the universities. Camera and TV, this is one thing about camera and TV, and I know this from being a mass comm major. They will go wherever the best players are. It don't matter. You can be in the middle of nowhere, no man's land. They coming. If you're a top player, they're going to go no matter what because these networks need the ratings to make the money that they want to make, right? They want to make top dollars. They need the ratings. And to get the ratings, they got to have the best people, the best players on TV. If my school, Mississippi Valley State University, has a top 20 or top 10 basketball player, the camera crew is coming to Itabena, Mississippi. And I know most of y'all have never even heard of Itabena. But they're going to come to the Mississippi Delta to come to Valley's campus to put that player on TV because the best players get the best TV ratings. It's simple as that, right? And also, TV networks will want to sign a deal with the school and say, hey, can we present your school uh, playing basketball on uh, ESPN, on CBS, on TNT during March Madness? Like, it will benefit the black community tremendously. If the black athlete comes, the money will start pouring in. Just think about it, right? The only reason the PWIs have so much money and so much, so way better resources, or a main reason they have uh, better resources than the HBCUs, is because the top black talent go play basketball and football there, right? They play the generate the uh, revenue generating sports, which drives in billions and millions in droves, which will help, um, which helps make the campus look better. They pour that money into the academic programs. They pour that money into facilities, into recruiting efforts of non-student athletes, and that's what ha that, that's what has their uh, their school looking so illustrious and so prominent. So just imagine if the black players go to the HBCU. Just imagine what would happen, man. Like it will, it would like the 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 money and the the um. 
the enrollment will increase tremendously because one thing that I know, HBCU students already have a sense of pride being at their school. But just imagine if they got several top 20, five-star, four-star recruits playing basketball, playing football at the school, man. What? People don't want to come to the school to be a part of that, to experience that culture because the HBCU culture is already a culture in itself from the band, from the uh, the way we the way we dance, the the uh, black Greek letter organizations, it's already a culture within itself. So just imagine if, you know, the, the, the sports teams is popping. People people going to want to come to those schools just because they want to experience, experience that. Think about it. How many kids do you know, a, a ton of kids go to LSU, Alabama, um, Ohio State, strictly because the football program is top, top tier, top notch. And the same will occur with the HBCUs, man. And it will be better for the HBCUs because it will it will give better resources to the ac other academic areas, uh, or academic focuses around campus, right? I was a mass communication major, right? If a, a top player goes to MVSU, it will generate so. If several top players go to MVSU, MVSU, it will generate so much money that they can give it to the mass comm department that I was in, right? They can give it to the math and science department, which will ultimately help the students be more equipped to be successful. Uh, in the professional ranks of corporate America once they graduate, right? And a prime example, in the mass communication department, we have to uh, make resume reels before we graduate that will help us uh, showcase our talent to these top networks that we may want to work for, the TV networks, the radio stations, so on and so forth. If the mass comm has better camera equipment, if the mass comm department has better camera equipment, better editing software, it leads to a better resume reel for students to present to the broadcast networks after graduating, which will give them a leg up to get better paying jobs out of school, which is absolutely dope, right? Additionally, man, um, the more prominent and popular a school is, which will naturally occur when a top player comes to the school, the more prominent the school is, the more people will clamor to the school to view the sports program, right? It will make the school a tourist attraction, and ultimately, it will better the economy uh, in these black communities, because most most HBCUs are located in black neighborhoods amongst black citizens, right? It will force uh, the local legislation to open WalMarts and grocery store chains in the areas like Itabena, where they we have to go way to we have to go to Greenwood or Greenville to go to to, to malls or all these different uh, grocery stores and so on and so forth. But it will better the economy that uh, of the environment or the neighborhood that the school is located in, right? Um, also it will create more jobs for the local citizens. If the school has more money, it will have more money to pass around to the local residents of the, uh, of the, of the neighborhood. And they will create more jobs for the locals, the, uh, the black, the local black citizens to have and, um, and lead to a more prosperous future for those individuals, which is something that's dope. I also saw, I saw someone say this, right? When McCore McCore committed to, uh, Howard, somebody said, um, wow, why go to a team that won't sniff the NCAA tournament? Man, if y'all don't get up out of here, this is way bigger than the NCAA tournament. Way bigger. Like, don't nobody care about the tournament, fam. It don't matter. Not participating in March Madness ain't never stopped the top player from getting drafted. It ain't never stopped a great player from going to the league. Prime example, Ben Simmons went to LSU, did not make the tournament at all, and still went number one overall because he was just that good. He was that man. So it don't matter, like, okay, if you don't go to the tournament. It don't matter. Gray Hoop was going to get picked up regardless. They're going to come and get you regardless. But at the same time, why not go to these HBCUs and um and, and, and uh, alleviate their financial woes and help better the black communities that these HBCUs are in, right? It will be so enriching for these black communities if these black players go to these schools and not leave them hanging. I'm not saying you can't, the black students can't go to PWIs. They can go to PWIs if they want to, that's fine. But I also feel like some of these black athletes need to go to HBCUs to help these HBCUs survive. These are institutions that are have been around for long, like years and years and have so much rich uh, tradition and history concerning our people. Um, and we don't want them to close and just be left to blow in the wind, left hanging in the wind while we just keep going to all these predominant PWIs and they're getting richer and richer. And our HBCUs are just getting, you know, they just, they left out, they left out with absolutely nothing and they don't have any money to even stay afloat. So I think that it would be beneficial for sure for the black community if these HBCU kids, um, if these black kids go to HBCUs, right? 
Um, just imagine if um if LeBron James sends his son to an HBCU. That would be absolutely remarkable. That would be crazy. Like everybody gonna go, like ESPN is gonna be forced to cover him because he's LeBron's son. He's actually a good basketball player. Um, he's a freshman now, but by the time he's a senior, I think he will be extremely evolved. So just imagine the type of revenue that would bring in for a historic uh, for a historically black college. Just imagine if a um, LeBron's son went to Jackson State, uh, a Mississippi Valley State, or a Howard University, Howard University, a Hampton, a uh, uh, Virginia State, um, a Alcorn State, so on and so forth. If he went to a, 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 a Morehouse, Clark Atlanta, some like he went to one of those schools. Just imagine what would happen, man. In this day and age. You don't need to go to the big school to get noticed. You don't need to go to an NCAA tournament to get noticed. Social media has put eyes on players in a way that has never been seen before. Think about it. John Morant, the top one of the top players in the, in the draft to get drafted this past uh, year, right? John Morant went to Murray State, which is not a, um, a school in a power conference at all. He went to a mid-major school and got noticed with no problem because he was just that good. So, it's gonna like if you if you that good, they're gonna find you regardless, man. They're gonna find you. And again, like I get more money in these schools leads to more job opportunities for the black citizens in these neighborhoods. It will like they will have more job opportunities in the schools, which will make them uh more prosperous. You know, and, and I really I, I really think this is this this is a uh, a step in the right direction for HBCUs, man. But something tells me, like I have a feeling that the NCAA may not like this, they're not going to like this, and going to try to hate on the HBCUs, and may try to investigate players going to HBCUs heavily over the predominantly white institutions. They might feel like, why they want to go um, to the HBCUs? We got better facilities and all that. No, man, it's bigger than that, man. We got to help the HBCUs stay afloat. The schools that our uh, ancestors went to, the schools that were dedicated to teaching black, uh, black students, because uh us our black students couldn't go to the predominantly white institutions because of segregation. We couldn't go there. They wouldn't accept uh, black kids. So they had schools specifically for black kids that taught about black history, uh, taught about talked about the culture, and helped to educate us in a way to to be prominent and prosperous in the working world after graduation, which is a, which is a, which is a, which was a beautiful thing and still is a beautiful thing, right? Um, I just think about it, man. All these facilities. We'll get, you know, we think about some of these HBCUs. They have dilapidated facilities and stuff like that because they don't have no money or the alumni uh, doesn't have the funds to just pour into the universities that uh, Alabama uh, or uh, Florida does, right? Man, the, the, the facilities will be top-notch and they will look the same way that, that the facilities look at PWIs because all these players are bringing in millions and millions uh, for the school due to uh, increase. Uh, what t due to the TV games, the merchandise sale? Look, if the top player in the draft go to an HBCU, people are gonna try to start buying Howard University jerseys and Jackson State jerseys and Grambling State jerseys. If they go to, if the top players go to HBCUs, man, like for real, all the jersey sales and all of that, man, it's gonna be crazy. The stuff they could come back to the to the historically black colleges. It'll be, it'll be dope, man. It'll drive in millions and millions of dollars for these schools. And I think that will that will be the key, man. Um, black athletes will give HBCUs money to pour into the academic programs. They will have it will pour into, like I said, the math and science departments and the criminal justice departments, and help these students be better prepared or better equipped to uh, handle the rigors of the whatever their professional field that they're uh, trying to be in, and. I think it's I, it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. Um, like I said, these young black kids, they fearless today. They don't care nothing about, oh, my God, I might not get drafted, so on and so forth. They want to be trendsetters, and they want to start out. They want to make a change, and they recognize the, the power that they have, and I have to salute them for that, man. Um, this is an iconic move, y'all. Like, again, imagine if, if Mikey, Mikey Williams joins McCoy McCoy at Howard. Howard going to be jumping, man. Like, what? You, you like you you gonna see all like all of that man? You, I promise you, they're gonna have to highlight HBCU life at that point. Boy, you gonna see the black fraternity. You gonna see the noobs out there on the yard, probably strolling. The young kids probably might want to pledge. It's gonna be like you gonna see all the 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 the, 
the whole environment or atmosphere of the HBCU on TV, but it also will bring in money and resources to the black schools, which is, which, which is what the black schools need. The resources, the same resources that the predominantly white institutions have, HBCUs need. We need it. We need the, 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 the better facilities, the better dorm rooms. We need the um, better equipment with, uh, within our departments, better... Uh, like better uh, link to links to internships, man. Well, I promise y'all, it's gonna be lucrative for these places that to, to go and seek students from HBCUs. Once it once these black kids start going to these uh, HBCUs to play sports, right? It's gonna be so many internships trying to people trying to give internships and reach out to the black colleges because they prominent, they popping, and the people gonna wanna be like, man, you know what? I want to see what's going on at these schools. They're going to want to give internships to the young black kids walking around there that's going to prepare them for their future. So I'm, like, I'm all for it, man. Y'all help these black, these HBCUs, these black colleges survive. A lot of them on their last leg. They've been just left in the wind. People don't really care about them no more. Look what happened to Morris Brown. Look, loss accreditation and everything. Look what happened to a lot of these schools that were so prominent. Keep Wilberforce, keep all these Cheney, keep all these schools alive and relevant. Mississippi Valley, Jackson State, Howard, Hampton, um, uh, keep Savannah State, Shannon Sharp alma mater. Keep all these schools afloat, Sacramento, South Carolina State. Keep keep them afloat and keep them thriving. And that's 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 what that, that is what will happen if these top black athletes go to HBCUs, man. It will benefit the black community in so many ways, man. Like. Again, if a black top, if the top black athletes go to HBCUs, it's going to create more jobs for what? Uh, physical therapists. It's going to be physical therapy spots all within the town. And it's a lot of black physical therapists that are trying to find a job. They went to school for it, trying to find a job and find their way in. What? Why can't they be hired at the HBCU? Perfect opportunity for it to shine, man. Perfect opportunity for them to shine and for it to happen. So I'm excited, man. I'm excited to see what what domino effect this will have on other black student athletes and uh shout out to mccord mccord for doing something super courageous taking a leap of faith and going and say you know what i'm gonna do something groundbreaking i'm gonna do something different i'm not gonna follow the rest i'm gonna follow my own mold that's the step of being a man y'all shout out to mccord mccord machiavelli mills tv y'all let me know y'all thoughts peace